Hello and welcome to week two of continuous learning uh, for English 10. This week we are focusing on main claims and subclaims, practicing coming up with valid reasons for why we think what we do. Um, last week we looked at general terms for argument and reviewed those, did a nice overview of that. This week we're going to dig in a little bit deeper with these main topics. Next week, we will be going into um, adding evidence to this with some reasoning skills, being able to actually explain how your evidence helps prove um, your subclaims or what we call reasons. So don't get confused between reasoning and reasons. Reasoning is like a process explanation. Reasons are like justification. So they're like your topic sentences, which we're going to go over a little bit today. Remember, this video is optional. It is to supplement the PowerPoint and the assignments for this week. So it's a little bit longer than what it would be if you just went through the material yourself. I also don't show all the videos. I simply tell you to go watch it. Um, but I figured some of you may want me to explain things. Feel free to fast forward through this video. Um, the purpose of it is for you to use it however it helps. Just imagine this is what I'd be lecturing in class and explaining. So you're gonna get far more explanation in this video than you get from just the PowerPoint and the documentation. Um, I will also have separate videos that specifically deal with how to complete parts of the assignments. So be looking for that. This will just take you through the informational stuff and going uh, through the instructions. All right, so our goal this week is that you can state your main claim on a topic and that you can also make decisions about that stance, that main claim, based on criteria um, rather than just preference or emotional attachment. We wanna add a little bit of logic here, which can still involve our emotions and just our personal preference, um, but we wanna go beyond that, especially if we want to appeal to a large audience. So you're also gonna end the week with explaining your choices by providing some clear reasons and evidence. And I know next week the focus is on evidence, but you're still gonna use a little bit of that this week uh, because it's hard to just come up with reasons that are good and classify things unless you have some evidence behind it. But you're not gonna do like research this week. Um, you're just gonna practice using these skills, okay? So um, it's one of my favorite weeks because it's a brackets activity that we're going to get into, and that's how you're gonna show your skills um, with this week's um, ideas. So here are the supplies you need. This PowerPoint, I say duh, because if you're looking at this video, you're seeing the PowerPoint, but there's the actual PowerPoint in Canvas. Make sure you open that. You can also go through that on your own without this video, but you're here watching the video, so I assume you wanted a little bit more um, with the answers, or a few more answers from me. Keep in mind I have my PowerPoint slide showing to you, so if you wanna fast forward, just go based off of the PowerPoint slides. So if you have a question about slide 15, find where slide 15 is in the video. When you fast forward through, you should be able to see what slide I'm on. It won't have a number, but it will have the, what's on the slide. Okay. So you need the PowerPoint to go with this. There's a Word document um, called Main Claims, Subclaims, and Bracket Assignment. Save that to your documents in your cloud. So actually open it and save it. And I'm gonna show you that in just a second. I'm gonna leave this screen and go to another um, thing in just a moment to show you all these things. The other thing you need is a PDF of the blank bracket. And I have two options for you. Some students really get into this and it's a, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and they want to go with a full 32 competitor bracket, um, which is considered a full March Madness bracket. And some kids want to do the basics, which is a 16 competitor fillable bracket. So you have two options. So if you're just going to do the basics for this week, you just pick the first one, which is this 16 seated fillable bracket. If you're wanting to do something more involved because you have a lot of competitors you want to look at, then go with the 32, okay? They're also gonna need your computer or phone with a working camera and microphone for recording. Um, so keep in mind, I know some people have had issues with their computer um, video and microphone working. You can also use your phone to access Canvas and record a video. 
The biggest problem probably with that is transferring your work from this week over to your phone. You're gonna probably have to save your work as a, as a picture and then transfer that picture to your phone or take a picture of your computer screen with your phone. So when you record your video on your phone, you can show that. And I have a separate video that talks about how to share a picture or a document um, in your video recording. So um, if you're just using your computer from school and everything works fine, you just need your laptop because you're gonna access Canvas to record a video, just like you guys have already done with Flipgrid. We're gonna be using that another one more time, at least. I don't know how many more times we're gonna use it, but I like it because it's a little bit more user-friendly than having you go into other programs that have a multi-step process for saving and then uploading. Flipgrid's gonna save and upload right in that program. So if you're wondering why do we use that instead of the other, that's why. You can always record in another program and then also upload it for the Flipgrid assignment, okay? Um, number five is the optional assignment. Our optional resource is, which is to print off your bracket on a printer. I have it set up that you can do this all electronically and share it electronically in a video. However, I know some of you may want to print it off and actually complete it by hand. Um, you're just gonna need to be able to show it to the screen so that people can see it. And that's how you can record your video to share your work. You just have to make sure it's easy for us to see. And I think when I go through today's examples in our lecture, that that's gonna make a lot more sense for you. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing this screen. So you're gonna see me, hi. Um, I'm going to share another screen with you, which is the different things that you need to open. For some reason, my computer's not working well with Zoom as far as like just bouncing between screens. So I always have to come back here to do it. So I'm just making it work because that's what I have to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you of resources that you need is that Word document. So this is what it looks like when you open it. It's in the Canvas assignment. What this is gonna do is it's gonna take you through my PowerPoint and this video, and this is a place for you to record your answers. So the first thing you wanna do is do a file and do a, save a copy of it or do a save as, okay? You need to save it somewhere before you start working in the file. You don't, definitely don't wanna lose the stuff, okay? So do that. Um, it has these little boxes where it says click or tap here to enter text. So that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna type in your name, okay? So here I would type in my name. And it's kinda cool, cause I can, you know, just do that. And then I come down here and this is the, the activity we're gonna get to next. But here I could just type and I'm just gonna type random stuff so you can see what it looks like. And it just continues in that text box. So it's really cool compared to last week. I found this feature for creating these types of forms and it just creates its own text box. And then for the next one, you do the same thing. And you type your response right into the box. Okay, so that's really kind of cool. I discovered that technology. Well, I kind of knew about it a little bit before, but I went back to it and decided to use it for this. So this takes you through the lesson and it's a place to take notes and keep notes that's really well organized and has labels that I've given you. Step three is the actual, actually to help you brainstorm the project you're doing for this week. Um, it starts with step three on this sheet. You have to pick a topic, you have to list 16 competitors, which that will make more, way more sense here in a minute, okay? Step four is establishing the criteria. So you have to list at least like three rules you're gonna use to make decisions for your activity. Then it tells you when to go fill in your bracket. And then of course there's the recording, your explanation online, okay? And then replying to peers. So it takes you through all the seven steps of this week's assignment. Um, my hope is that it doesn't take you too long to do that. Um, my goal when I plan is that I think if you go through the assignment, you'll spend anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Um, I know that um, the recommendation from the state is no more than two and a half hours a week. So we're definitely trying to keep it way under two and a half so that those that take, it takes them a little bit longer to do it, students that just take a while longer to process or have to look at instructions more than once, that it's easy for them to do that, all right? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna share with you is the actual bracket. So this is what it looks like right here. Um, this is the simple one that everybody should do this as a bare minimum. So I'm gonna minimize, make it a little bit smaller so you can see the whole page. It's one page and um, you could print this off if you want, but you can also fill it in electronically. 
So you, I will go over the instructions here in a minute from the PowerPoint, but you, just to show you how the technology works, I can type in here and the text will get really small. So you don't want it to be too much because see, I can't even read that. But for our purposes, it's gonna be fine. You are going to be able to just type in a term, okay? So I can put, okay, chocolate frogs, for example, okay? And I can fill in all these little purple things with information. And so this is what you're gonna do. So you're also gonna wanna do a file save as for this bracket. All right, so that's the other resource. I'm gonna show you the other option. So let's say you really get into this and you're like, man, I have way more than 16 things I want to have in my competition. And this will make more sense again when we get to the lesson here in a minute. Um, you'll want to save this. This is a bracket that you can fill in. It's a little more complicated, a little clunkier to use because you know clicking in it, it's not as intuitive as the other one. So right here, my chocolate frogs, I think would go here if I remember right. Uh, no, I'd put it up above, sorry. I would put it right here on the line. And then each winner would go on top of the line. So if chocolate frogs wins here, I would do it there. And maybe it was up against, um, I'm doing Harry Potter candy if you can't figure that out. So birdies, is that how I, anyway, those weird tasting jelly beans, you know, the ones that have like the vomit flavored and we do like a winner between them, okay? So that's how you fill out this one is you have to click on top of the line and you fill it in as you go until you get to your champion. And that will make way more sense, like I've said a million times, when I get back to the lesson. Okay, so that was that component of what you would need. So those are all the resources that you really need. So we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint and um, I'm gonna take you through the lesson. So that was all your resources. So we should be ready to rock and learn some things. All right, so this next part's a little bit of review. Last week we reviewed these terms. I always embed those in the next weeks because we want to, before we start the lesson, just make sure you remember it from the week before. So you can watch this video. It's a quick little like two or three minute video reviewing some of our terms, okay? And it's parts of an argument, but we're gonna be focusing on main claim and reasons slash subclaims, okay? If you don't like the video idea, it's two minutes, 46 seconds. See, it's going. Okay, so you can watch that if you want. You can also just look at the slides. I provided another type of definition. The words are not exactly the same as last week. That's on purpose because I want you to hear different definitions so that hopefully one of them makes sense. To you. So the main claim for an argument is the overall thesis. It's what the writer or speaker is actually arguing for, okay? So my example here is about an old TV show. I think Survivor's still on. I don't even know. I only watched the first season. Survivor is the most entertaining reality show currently airing on television. Here's the thing. Your statement needs to be debatable, meaning we could disagree on it completely. Um, so that's why it's an argument, okay? It's something where we could have different stances. So my stance is very clear on how I feel about this issue. The issue is obviously deciding what's the most entertaining reality show currently on television. And I'm gonna argue that it's Survivor. Some of you might do a different reality show and wanna argue that yours is the most entertaining one, okay? So that's my main claim, that's my main purpose, what I'm getting at. Sometimes a main claim in an argument can also be a call to action. You want your listener or reader to do something or make, make a certain purchase or, um, make change in the world or their community. And that can be really effective. That's why a lot of this stuff matters to me is that our lives are full of arguments and, and trying to argue our case, hopefully to people to get what we want and make our lives better and the world a better place. All right, next term. Or we gotta practice first, I forgot about that. Um, can you identify the claims being made in these popular advertisements? Take a second to look at them. And remember on this section, there's nothing to write in your notes, um, in your Word document. This is all just review. So it's you just going through the information and practicing it um, so that you make sure you're understanding the concept. So take a minute. I'm just gonna sit here awkwardly and look at one of those ads and decide what, what is the main claim?
sometimes it will come out and say the main claim. Other times it's implied. For example, I'm going to look at this one for palm, which is pomegranate juice. It tells you right there. Um, it says cheat death, which I could say the main claim is that if you use, if you drink palm, you're going to cheat death. Now, I think that's an exaggeration. I think it's hyperbole they're using. Advertisements are known for using hyperbole. What I think it's really saying, what the main claim of this is that the antioxidants in our product, if you drink those, it's good for you and your health and you'll end up living longer. That's the main claim. But they visually represent that idea to have you kind of soak that in. So that's the main claim of that one. Okay. The vitamin water one over here, more muscles than Brussels. We're not talking Brussels the place, we're talking Brussels sprouts. Um, if you've never eaten Brussels sprouts, they have a reputation for not being that tasty. I like them, but there's a lot of people who don't. Um, but they're very healthy for you. A lot of people that are into weightlifting, that's a key vegetable that I know they prep for the week when they do meal prep. Um, so I'm taking some knowledge I have about that. So I know that's a not so tasty, but healthy vegetable. So, um, and I know that people that are building muscles often eat those as part of their diet. So vitamin water is claiming that it will give you more muscles than Brussels sprouts. They're making a comparison. It'd also be interesting if they have a follow-up campaign that talks about the taste being better than Brussels sprouts. Um, but the fact that it gives you the results that you want, but it comes in a drink that's tasty compared to Brussels sprouts, I think is implied, okay? So hopefully you looked at some of those and you just check that you understand what's really going on in these ads. Advertisements are great to look at for argument, by the way. I use them all the time. All right, so this goes to your note sheet. So make sure you open your note sheet. Um, we're gonna be looking at some subclaims and reasons. Remember reasons was part of our thing. Those are the things that support um, our main claim. So a subclaim, remember we're reviewing definition here, is a claim dependent on or rising out of another. So we have our main claim here at the top and we have reasons or ideas that support it. And we often have to prove those other claims also to be true and we do that with evidence, which next week we're gonna really, really look at evidence hardcore. Um, it helps us elaborate on the main claim, get more specific as to like why we feel that way. So think of it if you ask yourself why about the main claim, your answer is kind of a because, and that is usually your subclaim. Think of them like topic sentences that you typically see in an essay, okay? So our example with survivors over here. So our main claim is survivors, the most entertaining reality show currently airing on television. Here I have two subclaims, reasons that I'm gonna argue in my argument to support that. I can't change from that. It needs to support the idea of why it's mo the most entertaining. All right. So over here on the one hand, it says Survivor consistently has higher ratings than any other reality television show. So that's a reason to support why it's the most entertaining reality show. It has a lot of viewers. People are watching it. So that tells me it has a huge audience. And then I would guess the evidence on this would go into what those ratings actually are. How many are they? What other shows even come close to having the same amount as survivors? So the paragraph or, or speech would continue with that type of detail. All right, the other reason or subclaim is that survivor has a unique format. Notice it doesn't tell me what that means. That's what the rest of the paragraph would do with evidence. It would explain that with that evidence. It would say, oh, well, each episode starts with this and they have these rules to the game of Survivor. Um, and then they always enter new things every year, new rules come into play and they change it up every year. But the basic concept is the same, you know, or it could just be the concept of the show is different than anything else that's on TV, okay? So I would be anticipating lots of supporting evidence for both of these subclaims. But those are good, solid subclaims. And I can tell the person's already formulating their argument of what they're going to actually say. Okay, so that's your example. Now we get to some that you can try um, writing in your actual notes. And I'm going to talk through it. You can write whatever you want in your practice sheet. I've given you spots. Remember when I was typing in that document? 
um, that's where we come up with this. Okay, so the first one, cell phones are a waste of money. I really disagree with that, but someone could argue it. And the key to argument is to just let go of your own personal attachment or anger about a topic. Being able to argue about something you don't agree with actually is helpful in developing you and your intellect. Um, it makes you a better thinker to think about opposing viewpoints. And it also helps your own argument. So even if some of these statements you don't agree with, it's really good practice. Um, the kids that practice with these things tend to start to think outside the box. And when we get to concessions and counterclaims later, they do a much better job. So this practice right now, using other people's main claims, and you writing subclaims to support it will help you there. Okay, so cell phones are a waste of money. All right, so my one reason I could come up with a subclaim for that, um, I could definitely argue that a lot of the things we can do on a cell phone, we can do on a computer as far as the smart technology. I can access my social media on there for the most part. Um, I can still engage that way. Okay, so I'm not gonna lose out socially because I don't have it. I can still access the internet on my computer. I can still do video chat on my computer. I can still watch YouTube. I can do all these things on my other device. I do not need a cell phone for that. My other subclaim is going to be that they're way overpriced, that you don't need the latest and greatest model uh, to get the basic use out of them. So people keep spending all these money, this money on them for that reason. Now, that one's not really that strong. I think maybe a better one would be, you know, okay, what alternative is there to cell phones? We use them to call people. Do we actually, how many of you use your cell phone to call somebody? How many of you use it to text? So really, has our cell phone become not so much a phone, but a mini computer? But I have a laptop I can use for all that stuff. I can, I can message people through Messenger on my computer. That's like texting. Um, it's the portability issue that makes cell phones valuable, right? So I'd have to argue what could I have that's portable. Now that might be a weakness in my argument, um, but I do know that you can still get a landline. You can still get a phone in your house that's connected to the wall, and maybe it's still wireless so you can walk around your house with it, but it's connected to some lines and you can have that as a phone to call people. So there are other options. So that might be my other sub claim is like, hey, you can still have access to all the apps on the internet with a, with a laptop, and you can have access to calling people by having a landline. That's how we used to do it before smartphones. So it's really, you don't need to spend your money on a cell phone. That's the argument, which is hard because I don't really agree with it, but because times have changed. All right, so type those in. I'll give you a minute, pause the video and go over and write in your own subclaims to support that idea. Remember, you're not gonna argue against it, you are supporting that con concept with two good reasons. You can use mine or you can use your own. So go ahead, pause the video. All right, the next one. There should be a law to make people recycle bottles and cans. So you're gonna support that, a law. So that means there's gotta be some enforcement with that, which I'm gonna assume there's some type of penalty or fine if you do not recycle your bottles and cans. Um, of course, they could give it an incentive like Oregon does, right? With the deposit you make when you buy a drink, they add on the tax then, and then when you turn in those bottles and cans, they give you your money back. And that's why people go and collect the bottles and cans from people that are like too lazy to go do that because they can actually make money off of that by turning them in. So I would need to come up with two reasons why there should be a law to make people recycle bottles and cans, whatever that is. Okay, so I think of, you know, what, what is one reason why we should do that? Maybe one of them is because not enough people do it already voluntarily. That's a good reason. And maybe the other one is because um, there is just too much waste in our world and we need to incentivize it for people to actually take action to um, recycle. So go ahead and pause the video, go write your own two subclaims over there.
All right, next up. Smoking should be banned in all public places. Now, this has happened, I think, pretty much everywhere in the United States, right? Now, all public places, are we talking about outdoors though too? And it makes me think that this would include that. It says all public places. And so public parks would be a public place. So you need to come up with two reasons to support that. I'm not gonna talk about this one because I've given you two examples already. I think now you should be able to get a handle of this on what are two good reasons why smoking should be banned in all public places. I'll go ahead and pause the video, go write your two subclaims. All right, and the last practice for this, people should be allowed to download as much music as they want from the internet. I'm gonna assume this is for free. Um, so now we know we have streaming services, but should we be able to actually download those onto our devices so we can just play whatever song we want whenever we want? So should we be able to do that for free? Um, come with two reasons why we should be able to. You have to think outside the box. So pause the video, go write down two subclaims to support that idea. All right, so we've done a little bit of review. We've done a little bit of practice. I've talked about the concepts. So now we're gonna get to your assignment for the week. Your sheet, your Word document you've been keeping notes in so far, you're on, gonna wanna continue with that because it's gonna help you brainstorm uh, for this project to show your learning. So this is really fun. If you don't know anything about March Madness, there's a little video here that explains that. It's two minutes to explain what March Madness is for college basketball. So um, there's a whole system to it. It's very specific on how it works. So they will break down how that works. So go ahead and go watch that video. It's only two minutes long and it will explain the concept. If you know what March Madness is and March Madness brackets, and you're like, Mrs. Thomas, I could totally teach this lesson about it then skip the video and go to the next thing. This is really for people that have never heard about it, don't even know what it is. And if you don't know, college basketball has a bunch of teams. This is their playoff to determine the national champion. All right, so this is what a regular March Madness bracket looks like, something like this. This is the one that we got from uh, CBS Sports. And they have other things over here. Um, it's much more complicated than what I'm gonna ask you to do. Way more teams. Um, the bracket's way bigger than what you're going to do for your assignment, but the concept is the same. So um, teams are placed on the outside. They are seated, um, meaning they are ranked in their divisions from first to, was it 16th? Yes, first to 16th. And so they are actually dealing with 64 teams total because there's 16 here, another 16 here. And so they divided up the country and all these colleges into divisions, four divisions. And they're East, South, West, and Midwest, as you can see on your screen. So as they play games against each other, the winner moves on to the next round, okay? Which is the next line. And I have it in that pinky purple color. So the green is like where they're placed before they play any games. And then when they play a game, the winner is entered on the next line. So if Virginia won, they would be put on this line and then they would play against the winner from Ole Miss and Oklahoma. So if Ole Miss won, Ole Miss would be written here. And then Virginia and Ole Miss would be playing a game. And whoever wins that one goes here. So eventually you get to the best of the best. It's a way to um, just see who's the best college basketball team in the country. And there's lots of factors that go into that as far as determining um, the ranking. So the video before this kind of explained a little bit of that. But this is the basic concept of a bracket. Um, there are brackets for all kinds of things though. So yeah, eventually winner would make it to the center. So you're probably like, okay, March Madness, Mrs. Thomas. Uh, it's, it's May now. Well, we usually do this in March. When school closed, it, it kind of ruined that. We were gonna be doing this right at the end of March, beginning of April, coming right off of March Madness, but that closed down. Um, but brackets, what does it have to do with English? Well, it's arguments um, that we're gonna deal with. So for March Madness, it's based off of just winning a game. That's all it's based off of. We're going to do that by arguing ideas and making decisions of who moves on to which round based off of criteria and solid reasoning, okay? 
Um, so we need that criteria, some justification to support why uh, we decided on a winner. Who would win in a match between these two things and move on? Um, another bonus for this, it gives you some practice with things we're going to be getting to in the next few weeks, but we're gonna try it out this week. So things like counterclaims and evidence and rebuttal refutation. As you're working through your bracket this week on this activity, you're gonna find yourself using some of those skills actually as part of the process and that's okay. Um, the big thing I'm gonna be looking for though that I'm really wanting to see is that you have a main claim, you've determined a winner and you have good reasons for why they made it to that spot. You do not predetermine a winner. Do not go into this with like, I wanna prove why Kobe Bryant's the best player of all time. No, that's not gonna work. All right, so this is where the idea really came from for me. Um, I've seen these online before a lot of people sharing brackets um, for a variety of things. And the big one is the Disney Pixar bracket. Now you cannot do this one for your bracket. I will give you some ideas of ones that you can do later. Um, but this comes from one of my friends, teaching friends, that he and his wife decided to do their own Disney bracket because they kept seeing all these other ones online and they just did not agree with how the things were placed in the bracket. Um, they didn't agree with the decisions people made. So over here, um, Mr. Gaudet, uh, he and his wife decided on how to seed them. And I took his explanation from social media. I asked him if I could use his bracket for a lesson, for this lesson. And I really liked that he had to make an argument. He had to have a solid idea and an explanation for it. So here's what he said. Um, he said, first, the seeds. Seeding is how you place them in your bracket before you make any decisions, okay? See all these numbers on the outside? Now he did um, a 32 bracket, okay? 32. I'm making you at least do a 16. So this has twice as many competitors, but he wanted to do that because, you know, that's how many films. So he divided his into classic Disney movies versus Pixar, okay? All right, so he said the seeds were determined by their Rotten Tomato audience score with critic score used as a tiebreaker. So he was able to take them and divide them that way, okay? So Rotten Tomatoes, if you don't know, is an online um, movie review website. So they have an audience score of how, just like you and I, how we rank the movies. All right, so then what they did as they went through this to determine winners, they debated each matchup, and if a clear winner wasn't present, we rated each film on a number of factors. Now, they kind of went with gut feeling for a first decision. I don't want you guys doing that for your bracket. You need to have clear criteria, which we'll get to in a little bit. So his isn't completely perfect. I've kind of tweaked the lesson to make it better. Um, but I like that they had to still think of criteria eventually. They said they rated each film on a number of factors, including but not limited to music, visuals, story, quality of protagonist, and relevance. Okay, so that was his criteria really. And he has one, two, three, four, five criteria that they looked at. That's, that's a lot of stuff. All right, next he says, a few of our social and political biases are showing. And the recency, meaning how recent the film came out when they did this, the recency effect most certainly made an appearance. So he acknowledges that, yeah, we may have been a little biased because if the film recently came out, we definitely gave a little bit more preference there. Um, and then he says, a little note says, my heart broke a little when we had to let Coco lose. But that said, I'll gladly take Zootopia into battle. Okay, so Zootopia was his overall champ, which I completely disagree with, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. But that was his decision, whatever. All right, so this is the basic concept of what you guys are going to be doing. And I'm gonna go into more detail and give you some examples. So I have a bunch of example brackets. Please do not, do not copy any of these brackets in this presentation. None of them, okay? It needs to be your own original idea. I'm gonna give you some ideas that you could use, okay? And I'll talk about the pros and cons of all of those. All right, um, most of them don't have the criteria listed and that's required for your bracket, but I wanted you to see visually what the brackets end up looking like once those decisions are made, okay? 
And my students have been doing these for years now and they love it. The other thing I will tell you is I'm giving you the option of working by yourself on this or with a partner. I don't care if the partner comes from the same class period that you're in. I mean, that would be nice. It makes my grading a little bit easier, but as long as they're one of Mrs. Thomas's English students for English 10. Um, you have to figure out the tech on that though if you're gonna do it. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on how to meet up with your partner and record a video together. That's, all, that's on you. And, but it's really fun to do this with a partner and be able to argue with them back and forth on making decisions. So if you have a friend in class or in another one of my class periods, message them, see if they wanna work on this project with you and you can do it together. Um, just make sure you still meet the deadlines for the dates and everything. Um, please don't pick someone you can't count on getting this done. All right, so here's another example similar to the last one. Um, we don't know the criteria on this one, but it definitely mixed up the um, Pixar and Disney in here. And I don't know what, how they classified them, okay? Because there's some really strong ones they put together, like, um, let me see, what one was I thinking of? Like Pocahontas and the, Hercules and Aladdin, I think that's a tough decision. I mean, those are two pretty strong movies. Um, and so, and, and then also if you just have like, if you have two of your best competitors with each other in the first round, that's gonna cause problems. Like I wouldn't wanna put Lion King up against Beauty and the Beast in the first round. Because to me, those are just such strong classic Disney films that you're gonna eliminate one of your top contenders early on. And the point is to keep your top ones in there as long as you can, but give your lower contenders a chance at fighting for their spot, okay? So you can see what they've done here with even all the toy stories and all that, okay? Um, and then their final winner was Frozen that went up against Toy Story. So that's interesting. I wouldn't have picked that. All right, here's another example. Um, this was an ice cream company, and it's not finished. The lines aren't filled out. You'll notice there's no winner listed, but they have four different regions that they've divided ice cream into to decide what's the best flavor of ice cream. So there's the vanilla region, which means that the base ice cream is vanilla, and then they add in other stuff. So like um, either it's plain vanilla or like cookie dough would qualify because that's typically a vanilla ice cream with just cookie dough pieces thrown in. Cookies and cream is technically here because you just throw a bunch of Oreos into vanilla ice cream. Down here is the specialty reason, region, so I'm guessing that's stuff that didn't fit anywhere else. Top right is chocolate and coffee region, so it has to be chocolate or coffee flavored ice cream, like the actual ice cream itself, not the stuff, just the stuff that goes into it. Um, and then the fruity region, so we've got cherry vanilla, pomegranate blueberry, peach, strawberry cheesecake, got all kinds, okay? So then they would, Here's the thing, if you pick food, that one can be really difficult because everybody's tastes are different. Our preferences are different. So you need really good criteria for that. How do you come up with criteria for taste though? Like, I don't know how I would fill out this ice cream besides which one do I like better out of the two, me personally. Well, that's not really good criteria. That's, you know, pretty weak. So, you know, it'd be one thing if I said, hey, I'm gonna pick what would be the best ice cream to have for my son Isaac's birthday party. Here's the criteria. He really does not like too much chocolate, so it has to have a good balance of chocolate and another flavor, and it needs to um, appeal to kids. It needs to be some a flavor that kids typically like, um, and it has to be one that doesn't stain my floor. Like if a kid drops it on my floor, I'm not gonna have a big old stain in the carpet. It's gonna last forever, okay? That's actually three quality criteria that I could then go through the ice cream list and narrow it down. Like for example, do most kids like coffee flavored ice cream? No, so the between dark chocolate and coffee, well, I also said he doesn't want something too chocolatey. So which one am I gonna go with? Well, I'm gonna say, he has never liked anything coffee flavored, and most kids don't. I'm gonna go with dark chocolate. But guess what, dark, dark chocolate is probably gonna lose out to one of these others, either chocolate or chocolate chip, whichever one up, went up against. Because dark chocolate, most kids don't like super dark chocolate, and he doesn't like chocolatey chocolatey stuff was my criteria. So I've gotta go from there, okay? 
So what I'm doing in this video is really explaining my process on how I would come up with criteria and narrow things down. All right, um, this one comes from Mr. Lynch, which is pretty awesome. And um, it's a bunch of metal bands and it's not finished, but it does have some criteria. This was not his criteria for making decisions. He clarified this. It was his decision for like which groups he included on here, okay? Um, and then he ended up finishing this later with his own criteria that was separate, which he's explaining to his kids because he knows that stuff off the top of his head. But I just wanted you to see another one that took bands and it was within a certain genre and wanted to decide who's the best metal band ever. And some of you could definitely do this with other genres that you know really well. If you really love um, R&B, pick 16 of the best R&B artists from today and the past and decide on who's the best R&B uh, singer, songwriter of all time, you know, whatever that is. If you like country music, you could do the same thing. And I'm gonna get into like how to divide it further in just a minute. All right, so this is the actual activity I've been referencing. Um, so you need to think about what is a topic that I know a lot about. Like you, it needs to be something that you could talk about without having to do research, that you could totally nerd out with somebody. Like maybe you do a little bit of online searching for this, but it's just because maybe you forgot like how to spell someone's name or you wanted to double check and go, oh yeah, there was that one person, that one thing and you could look it up, okay? Um, if you're gonna work with someone else, you need to make sure there's something that both of you know a lot about. So if you and a friend know a lot about anime, and you wanna come up with like, what is the best anime series of all time? Of all time, so we're gonna look at past and present. That'd be cool, you could do, totally do something with that. You have to make sure it's also something that has at least 16 competitors. Remember I have the option to do a 16 or a 32 competitor bracket. So that means you need 16 different things that you can decide winners from just like the disney pixar ones so for example if i was going to do candy bars remember food's really hard to do i i would tell you that you need to have a scenario or something more specific than just like what's the best candy bar what's the best candy bar for what be more specific if you're going to do that and are there at least 16 candy bars that i know well enough that i could actually do this with okay be careful picking something too specific or too general. Too general is my example of what is the best candy bar. That's way too general because that's gonna be really hard to determine a winner. Too specific is like you just have something that's so narrowly focused that you've really used some of the criteria in the argument itself. Sometimes I see this with kids when they're like, I would like to figure out what's the best anime series of the 21st century only that features a female protagonist that doesn't die. I mean, that, that's so narrowed that I don't know that that would be easy to figure out. You gotta decide that though, okay? So just be careful when you're picking a topic that you don't pick something too specific or too general. The other thing I wouldn't do is I've had some kids that really love basketball or any sport and they'll say, oh, I wanna figure out just the greatest of all time basketball player. Okay, but how do I compare Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to somebody like, like um, I was gonna say Shaq, but they played the same position, so that would be easy. Um, how does he compare to LeBron James? How do I compare players that played completely different positions? They're gonna have different statistics on, on how they play and all that. And even if I put it in a scenario of like, well, if they were playing one-on-one, -on -one, who would win? Well, of course, if they're playing one on one, that's going to be very different. I mean, obviously, whoever's fastest and tallest is probably going to do the best. I mean, don't argue with me about it. I'm just saying that it makes it really difficult if you're going to be that general. Okay. So, if you want to do like a greatest of all time, I had some kids do some awesome presentations last year on who is the greatest point guard of all time in, in the NBA. And they were very specific NBA, point guard, best. And then they had criteria they determined off of what statistics they wanted to look at. I had baseball players that were done last year, same thing. Who's the best, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of it was just based off statistics. They went and looked up the statistics for all these different teams. I had some that was like, um, 
out of all the NFL franchises, which is the um, best one of all time. And then their criteria listed what they meant by best of all time, best one. So it had to do with like the fan base. It had to do with like their memorabilia, how long they've been around, how many championships they won. So there's lots you can do here um, with, with what you know a lot about. It needs to be something that's interesting to you. That's what makes this so fun too. No, you can't simply do an NCAA college basketball bracket. <laughs> that's cheating even though there wasn't a tournament this year. Normally each year there's a kid that just wants to take the bracket and just fill it out and just fill it out and they, it's who they want to win. And I'm like, no, you need criteria and that's not gonna work. So here's some more ideas. Again, greatest of all time for any sport, just be really specific that you actually wanna pick like a position or something more specific than just saying, oh, this is the greatest hockey player of all time. That even might have too much variety to be able to do that and too much personal preference would come in. You can do a lot of cool stuff with superheroes. There's actually lots of brackets out there about DC versus Marvel, and I didn't put them in this presentation because I wanted you to be able to pick that as an option. I've had some cool ones done about horror movies. They wanted to pick like the best horror movie of all time, and I had some students that knew a lot about that. They've watched a ton of them, and so they came with their criteria of what makes a great horror movie, and that's what they make, made their decisions based off of. Um, Netflix binge-worthy TV shows, you could do that. Just make sure you're specific. Are you doing everything that's out there or just kids shows or are you doing a specific genre? I've had some kids do like um, the Disney, what's that um, cable, the cable channel show for Disney. Is that where Wizards of Waverly Places and all that? So they did something like that where it was like all those like tween shows that you guys probably watched when you were kids up through middle school maybe and like iCarly and all those dumb things anyway so we want to decide which one was the best one I've had ones with like what's the best musical I mean there's just all kinds of things you can do um best hamburger I have over there is a food one that one gets really difficult because there's so many options with hamburgers so how do you decide so this is really deciding between brands for like a basic cheeseburger like you could decide on that like hey we're not going to look at specialty ones we're only going to look at basic ones um you could look at k-pop groups i had kids do that last year and i had some like i said earlier with anime that were really awesome kids that are just really into like k-pop groups but are there 16 that's the key and do you know all 16 so Anyway, I think you guys have the idea of topics. I think I've talked about it way too much and you probably know, already have a cool idea going on in your head. Um, if you don't come back to this slide, think about some of those things. Think of what could I actually do? Like when I was a teenager, I knew a lot about different dog breeds, breeds of dogs. Yes, I was a little obsessed with learning about dogs. Um, I could have, when I was a teenager, definitely done a bracket about what would be the best dog to buy for an active family that has little kids. And that would be my criteria. It needs to be good with little kids. It needs to be able to go on runs with the family because they're active, right? Uh, maybe I have another one in there that does well in the outdoors, hiking and whatever, depending how active they are, I guess. And then I could pick the best breeds for that. And then I could narrow it from there. And maybe I have something in there like shed factor. Mom doesn't want to have to clean up all the dog hair. So, or maybe they don't want one that's too big, like. You know, they want it to be able to fit in the back of their Subaru, you know, so that would be a criteria in there, okay? All right, moving on. So you need to decide on a topic and a list of competitors. And in your Word document, it has a space for this. So write down your list of the top 16 competitors for your topic. So you put the topic in first and then list your 16. So for example, trust me, I'm giving you tons of examples because I want it to make sense. Um, if I want to do mine on the most powerful fantasy or mythological creatures, I would just then go list them in my Word document. Dragon, Minotaur, Sphinx, Trolls, Bunyip, Centaur, Chupacabra, Banshee, Sirens, Werewolves, Basilisk, Chimera, Kraken, Kraken, I'm going to say that wrong, Kappa, Vampire, Anansi. So those are my 16 fantasy mythological creatures, I need to decide what I mean by powerful. 
So I'm saying they're most powerful. So my criteria next is gonna be about them. So I need to list my 16 that I've brainstormed that I think already just off the top of my head are very powerful, but I'm not getting to the why yet. I'm just gonna say, these are my, these are like when I think powerful fantasy mythological creatures, these are the ones I think of. And just write them down. So you might want to pause the video right now, figure out your topic, maybe talk to a friend and come back to this video later. Um, figure out if you're gonna work with somebody, but you need to come up with your 16 competitors. If you wanna do 32, that's also an option. All right, moving on. Um, this part is not required, but it really does help you organize your competitors or if you're kind of stuck, which is dividing your ideas further. You can think of your main topic and think of how can I divide this into two or four divisions? Remember when we looked at the NCAA bracket, they had the country divided into four divisions based on, it's kind of ish located on location, um, but no more than two or four divisions, that's it. It should have an equal number of competitors per division as well. So if I have 16 total competitors and I put them into two divisions, that means each half of my page would have eight, okay? I need eight in each category. If I divide it into four divisions, each of them would only have four competitors. So for example, I'm gonna give you another example. If I wanna figure out the best fantasy series of all time, we're talking books, I could divide my thinking into four categories to brainstorm my 16 competitors. This is what I did here. I didn't think of the competitors first. I mean, there were some in my head, but I decided I wanted to think of like, how can I break that into four different divisions to really capture a variety of um, writers and books. So I decided to have a British authors section because there's a long tradition going back to Tolkien with British authors who write fantasy, okay? And there's just a ton of them. So I just decided they'd be their own category. I also had young adult British, because you know, Harry Potter, hello, and Narnia, I put those in there. And I just decided young adult would be like their intended audience as a younger audience doesn't mean that adults don't enjoy it. It's just not written to an adult audience, okay? Um, then I thought of American authors because I wanted to counter the British. So I just decided to go British and American. So I could rename this as best British or American fantasy series, okay? So I did American authors, meaning those are written for adults, and then young adult American, those are intended for a younger audience, teenager or younger, okay? So out of that, I just said, what's the most popular that probably people have heard of or come up on the Google search. So Lord of the Rings, Discworld, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, and The First Law. I'll be honest, I don't know all of those. I know um, two of them I know pretty well, two of them I don't, okay? But I would do some more research on those. The next is Young Adult British. Um, so I picked Harry Potter series, Narnia series, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by um, C.S. Lewis. Redwall, which is the one about mice, rats, whatever, and they fight with swords, it's like all medieval. And then there's his Dark Materials, which is the one with the polar bear and the airships um, that you may be familiar with. And the first one's called The Golden Compass, so you might be familiar with that one. Um, the third category is American authors, so I picked the four best American author series that I knew. So A Song of Ice and Fire, that's also known as Game of Thrones. Wheel of Time, Robert Jordan, talked about by everybody as one of the best of all time. And then the last two are some more modern ones, um, the Mistborn series and King Killer Chronicle, which I know both of those because I've read those. All right, last one is Young Adult American. So I picked, obviously Percy Jackson has to be in there. The Inheritance Cycle, that's the Aragon ones with the dragons. Um, Earthsea is not as well known to most students, I find, but it's by Ursula K. Le Guin, a powerhouse writer. And then the last one is one I'm not familiar with, with, but I found on a bunch of lists, which is The Dark is Rising. So I just separated, I, I, I separated into categories so that then I could brainstorm a little bit easier because it was just such a big idea that I needed to break it down further. Now remember, this isn't required. It's to help you with how to divide your thinking, okay? Um, I could have divided it into different categories. I could have said, I'm gonna have one side of my bracket be high fantasy and the other side be urban fantasy. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. I'm just telling you. I could have also divided it between female versus male protagonists, okay? I also could divide it between pre-21st century, so anything from um, 
before the year 2000 to everything since the year 2000. Okay, so 21st versus pre 21st. So there's all kinds of things you can do to divide divide your idea up a little bit more. So for example, I've kids in the past that did um, best point guard in the NBA of all time. And one side was players since 2000, the other side was players before the year 2000. So it would really come together in the middle as a battle between somebody that was around a long time ago playing and someone that may still be playing, or maybe not, but at least more recently. All right, so if that's a lot for you, um, this might be a good place to stop, to just brainstorm your idea and to come up with your 16 if you didn't do that already on the other pause points. So this is another really good pause point um, to stop if you're gonna stop for the day and to think and work on your brainstorming sheet in the Word document. Um, you shouldn't be in your brackets yet, like filling those out. Um, right now you're still brain brainstorming process. All right, so we're gonna move on with establishing the rules, how to do the criteria and ranking. Um, when you establish criteria, and I've talked about it a little bit already, so for some of you it might make sense already. You need to think of what makes something the best in that category or how do you define it? So what are the features or details you look for in this? You need at least three, okay? I'm gonna have you rank your criteria, like what's the most important down to the least important? So just number it, one being the best, like the most important criteria, the most important detail that you would look for in this. So. For those of you really liking the Disney one and you're like, man, I really want to do the Disney Pixar one, you have that. Here's a way to think about it. Maybe you want to do a bracket of who's the best Disney villain. I have a lot of fun ones that come out from that idea. So you're looking at who's the best bad guy. And then you would need to come up with criteria of like, what makes somebody a villain? Like, what are the top things? Is that they have a lot of swagger? Is that when they enter a room, people, the other people or animals cringe in fear? Is it their voice and something about their voice? Is it that they have a really cool song that they sing at some point? Um, do they have to wear dark clothing? Is that something that makes them a villain? Or does it have to be something dark about them in their features or their clothing? Um, I'm thinking of like Scar from Lion King and he has like the dark mane, right? And the other lions don't. Um, you think of Maleficent and she's got those dark cloaks with the horns coming out and everything, you know? All right, so you gotta come up with your criteria, rank it. What is the number one thing I'm gonna look for and the number two and so on. Your last criteria you come up with, like the one that's the bottom rank, I would use as a tiebreaker. Just label it as a tiebreaker so that you, way well, you know if you've gone through all your other criteria and you still don't know which one to pick, that one's gonna decide it. Okay, and, and you're going to be honest about it. Like if everything else is equal, that's going to decide it. If it's still equal all the way down, then maybe you're gonna have to flip a coin or just go off personal preference at that point, okay? Write it down, put it on that assignment sheet, put your criteria down and then rank them. Just put the number next to them. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, whatever that is, write tiebreaker next to the one that's a tiebreaker, whatever that is you need to do. So pause the video. Go do this step because you're about ready for the really exciting fun part, which is making decisions and filling in a bracket. All right, I'm going to go back since it's been a while since I went to the Word document. So I'm going to go there to show you what that looks like. Um, so I was telling you to go to your thing to fill in. You should have this so far. You should have your topic. You should have your 16 competitors. So step three should be done. And right now we are on step four, which is the features or details will list at least three. So I would list it, list it, list it, and then go back and just number them. So I can just put a number in front of it. My number one, here's my number two, and here's my three slash tie breaker. Okay, easy. Just some way that works for you for labeling it. Don't be worried about it being completely perfect. It's just to get your thought process down, okay? So it tells you, go back and rank your features from one to three or more. One equals most important, your last criteria. I mean, I give the repeated instructions here. Next, we're ready to fill in your bracket, which shouldn't really take too long, but 
this is the really fun part with a partner. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Um, here we are again. So now you are going to fill in your bracket. I already showed you how to access it in earlier in the video. So if you didn't get that, just go back. Um, the big thing is you don't want your top picks to go against each other in the first round. So it's important to seed them. Um, it's already partially done for you in the bracket. It's actually all done. You just have to figure out what constitutes number one through 16. Now, um, this bracket is the base one that you guys have to do. If you do the 32, you're going to have, you know, 16 on each side. This one has eight competitors on each side. See? One, two. This number next to them is, and you see it in the green is circled, the number one. That's my number one overall out of the 16 that I think is a very strong competitor just with my gut instinct, okay? You can just go with your gut on this part of seeding of what do you think is the ranking of them so far if you were just gonna go rank them, okay? Without looking at all your criteria. The numbers with the parentheses by them, just ignore those right now. They're gonna be used later when you fill out the rest of your bracket. That's indicating what order you're going to go in to make decisions to make sure you follow the right sequence. Um, some kids get really, I'll go back, some kids get really into this and they understand brackets and they come up with different criteria for each round. So that here they use criteria one and then here they use criteria two and then for the overall winner they use criteria three. If you want to do something weird like that, that's totally cool, up to you. I've just set it up pretty basic that you're just thinking of all three criteria as you go. And they would do the same thing over here, criteria one, criteria two, and then the criteria three determines the winner. That's basing off of what we call rounds. All right, so seating the competitors. Your blank bracket has a seating arrangement done for you. That's why I just talked about it. It has the numbers next to the line. I said, go with your gut instinct is an easy way to do it. Just don't randomly place them. You don't want one of your strongest competitors going against another strong competitor. You're gonna eliminate a favorite early on. Okay, you wanna save them. I remember my friend used the Rotten Tomato rankings to seed his movies. Is there something like that you can use? Can you look at candy bar sales? Can you look at a company's value or worth? Can you look at um, a past completion rating, uh, ranking? Um, whatever that is, you could use that, okay? Again, you can still here classify your topic into those divisions, like I mentioned earlier, left versus right, or top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. So here's my example. I told you I have lots of examples. It's gonna annoy you because this video is gonna be an hour long. <laughs> That's okay. It takes a lot of work. Um, so here I decided to do what is the best fruit or veggie. It could be either one. I just wanna pick which is the best one um that i want to eat for at my barbecue okay that's what i'm in, i'm just going to pretend okay um so i have two divisions here um i have vegetables versus fruit okay so left side is vegetable right side is fruit i also in this if you didn't pick up on it actually have four divisions here so you could just do it with two divisions, like what it looks like right now, but I'm gonna show you that there's actually four divisions here. So top left side is actually vegetables that grow above ground. Top right are fruit that grow on trees. Bottom left, all four of those grow below ground and they're vegetables. And then bottom right are fruit that are not grown on trees. So you can do it either way. I just happen to want to show one that does both a division in half between vegetables and fruit and also other criteria because it helped me organize it. And then what I did was within those, I just ranked the four. I kind of said, okay, I need a strong versus a weak, okay, and a strong versus a weak. So I considered beets and radishes not as popular. So I put them with a stronger contender like potatoes and carrots, which more people tend to enjoy. Same thing with corn and broccoli, squash and peas, okay? So that's really how I was able to seed them. No pun intended, talking about fruits and vegetables. All right, so now is your work time. You can pause the video here and go work on your bracket. If you're working with a partner, you should be video chatting with them or texting back and forth about your decisions and filling in the seeds on the bracket. 
um, then you take your criteria and you start deciding your winners and finish filling in the bracket all the way. Follow the numbers with the parentheses to do it in the proper order, okay? That means you're making the decisions in the right order so your thinking stays consistent. Um, make sure you use your rank criteria for all decisions. Don't deviate from that. It's gonna make it really difficult to do your video that you're turning in for this if you just go randomly with just your gut choice. All right, so you gotta use that criteria. All right, so here's the order you do it in. Pay attention to the parentheses, and that would be my first decision. I would decide between corn and broccoli, and I would actually fill in the winner on that line. So I decided for that first competition there, it's corn. Second one, squash versus peas. Maybe I decided based on my criteria that peas would be the winner. And then I go to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I finish the first round. Okay, now it's time for the second round. Second round, I'm gonna start with number nine. I'm gonna talk about the corn and the peas, and I'm gonna decide which one fits my criteria. I'm gonna write it on that line. And I'm gonna go to number 10, number 11, number 12, and that ends the second round. Final round is gonna be between, um, I'm sorry, that's not the final round. <laughs> um, the next round is gonna be decide who's gonna to go to the final. So it's number 13 and 14. So I decide between this competitor at nine and that one at 10, determines this one. And so they just go on the next line. So then my final winner is between this guy, between the two guys at the center, and I just put the winner's name in the center. Spot this as winner, pretty obvious. All right, so you could have paused it there and worked on your bracket. Um, this is the first part of your turn in. So what I'm gonna have you do is, um, I'm going to have you guys use Flipgrid within Canvas. And the yellow is dependent on your teacher's preference. I'm telling you that I would like you to upload it to that assignment in Canvas, which is a Flipgrid video. I have a tutorial video in there about how to share your screen in order to share your bracket that you filled out. If you did it on paper, you are able to just hold your paper bracket up to the screen, okay? Um, it's due by Thursday at midnight. You need to upload it by then. Um, a couple of things. You have to one, record your and submit your video showing your bracket and explaining your answers to the questions that are in this green box. Um, the other thing you need to upload is the document you filled out to prepare for your bracket, okay? And that will be a separate assignment in Canvas. And that is partially to help me understand your video in case I have issues with that, okay? Um, so please make sure you submit both of those. Um, so here are the questions you need to answer in your video. When you show, you don't even need to show your face. Please do not feel like you have to show your face if you don't feel comfortable doing that. I love seeing your faces, but I'm weird. Um, you can just show your bracket the whole time. Make sure you speak up so everybody can hear you. If I can't hear you, I can't really understand if you did a good job with this or not, okay? Um, so the first question or thing to deal with is you need to tell us what, you're, what you decided with your bracket. What was your topic and what were you trying to determine? That's your main claim. So you need to say my main claim was um, whatever, okay? Or I mean, it's kind of your main claim. Your main claim is really who is the winner, but you wanna tell us what your actual category was, okay? Two, you need to tell us what criteria you used. Like, what were your reasons to make each decision, to determine each winner? Um, so list them out, tell us. Three, who won the whole thing? So that's, that's really your main claim, is like if I say, you know, it, we determined that, you know, mint chocolate chip ice cream would be the best ice cream choice for your son's birthday party, then that would be what I would say for number three. Number four is, were you happy with the winner? Why or why not? Sometimes kids go through this process and they find out that the winner was not who they wanted it to be. It was not whatever they wanted because they actually followed the criteria and realized that their personal preference was not following with that criteria. And it's hard when that happens, but it's a lot of fun. And then five, what was the most difficult matchup during the whole process? Like which decision anywhere along the way between competitors was the most dif difficult one. That's what we mean by matchup, is between the two competitors. So if I was deciding between, you know, uh, cookies and cream ice cream and um, cookie dough, oh my gosh, that's a hard decision because I love both of those. So what was my criteria and what made it so difficult? Is it the fact that they both involved 
putting cookies into vanilla ice cream. So they're just so similar that 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 was really hard to determine. So then we had to go further into our criteria. Maybe we even had to go beyond our criteria because they were still even clear to the end, clear to the tiebreaker. And then we had to figure something else out. Okay. So that's, you need to have in your recording an explanation of all those things for your bracket. If you're working with a partner, that means you both need to get together to record this video. I'm, I know you can't do that in person, <laughs> duh. Um, but if you're choosing to work with a partner, find a technology that works for you, something that you can record. So you could set up a Zoom meeting with each other and record the Zoom meeting. And you can share your screen in a Zoom meeting. It's actually pretty cool. And then you could both talk during that about your bracket. Um, keep in mind, there's gonna be a time limit for your video. Um, I'm still deciding if it's gonna be five minutes or 10 minutes, but that will be listed on the assignment. All right, so that's due Thursday by midnight, your preparation sheet for this project and the recording of your video explaining what you came up with for your activity project thingy. Um, I will, this is for other teachers to insert a link to a tutorial video. I'm gonna link that um, into Canvas. I will have it in there. I've already recorded a video of how to share your screen in a Flipgrid video. Um, so here's the last requirement is, I know this goes past Thursday, but we wanted you to be able to turn something in by Thursday, but also have a chance to see all the cool stuff that your peers did. I think that's one of the most powerful things about this assignment is normally we meet in class and we do a day or two of presentations where each partnership gets up in front of the class and explains their brackets. And it's a lot of fun. We ask each other questions. Some kids get really upset in the audience because they're like, what? How could you decide so-and-so is better than so-and-so? And, -so? and um, they ask each other really good questions and I'm really sad we don't get to do that. So I really wanted to have something interactive here that you guys look at each other's stuff and comment on it. And I would say, you know, go find a peer's video response that is about a topic that you know quite a bit about so you can go comment on it, okay? Um, so you need to record a reply in the assignment, um, if you go back to where you recorded your original video, you can click on other students and watch them. And I, by the way, I have a tutorial about how to do this too, so make sure you look at that. Um, at the bottom of their video, you're gonna see a little green conversation box. It looks like a little button, a circle button with like a conversation window in it. You click that, that's to reply, and then you can record a reply. So in your reply, here's what I want you to do. One of two things, okay? You can either ask them a question about their bracket, criteria, or their process, just about what they did. Remember, we're not doing personal attacks. We're not, you know, getting all upset because, you know, we're online and people have worked hard on this and we want legitimate questions, okay? Or if you don't like asking a question, you can comment on something they did well with their presentation, but be very specific. Don't just go on there and go, I thought you did a really good job talking about ice cream. You know, you should give, something specific that they brought up or mentioned or maybe a decision they made in their brackets that you thought was well done, okay? So um, that's how you reply. And that is due by Friday at midnight um, is the last chance to submit those replies. Um, I also have a video about how to reply to your peers and that is gonna be on Canvas. Um, I will probably insert the link also into your PowerPoint. So if you have your PowerPoint open, you're gonna see the updated version of this with the links to all my tutorials um, to help you out with the technology side of it. Um, if you have any questions, please join me at the Q&A during the week. That's why I have those set up is to answer questions about this assignment. So I know, for example, those of you on Monday, second period, it's kind of hard because you just received the information. You maybe haven't had a chance to go through the whole thing. But um, feel free to email me, people from Monday especially, um, if you look at that stuff after we get together for the Q&A, um, and I can answer it, or I can send you a link to a video that will explain it, um, or direct you, or, or maybe it's just a simple question you have that you're making things overly complicated, okay? So that is really it. Um, 
I hope you have a lot of fun with it. This is one of like my favorite, favorite assignments of the year. And actually for all the 10th grade teachers, it's one of our favorites to do. We knew with this distance learning, we had to still do brackets. Um, I'm sad we weren't able to do battle bars. I usually do a class uh, debate about candy and one group has one candy and one group has the other and they have to argue stuff. So that's my other favorite activity we weren't able to do. Um, but this one, I think we found a really good way to make it still work. So I hope you get into it. I hope you enjoy it um, and that you find it interesting and find that, you know, argument can be fun, but can also change your mind. It forces you to think. Um, and not just give your gut reaction about stuff. So if you have questions about the technology, please look at the resources first and then send me an email if you still have problems. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys can do and um, how much you nerd out about the things that you love. So see you guys later.